Okay, so here is where we left off. And I think I will do our end result in purple. So we start with our highest degree term. So we've got 2x to the fourth power. Now it looks like all the green ones are third degree. So let's combine those. Negative x cubed plus 12x cubed. That sounds like 11x cubed. Now our second degree terms. There's three of those. Negative 1 minus 6, so that's going to be negative 7, plus 18, so that's going to be 11x squared. Let's see. Make sure we get these all. Got the green ones. Got the blue ones. Get the orange ones. Negative 6x minus 19, excuse me, minus 9x, that's minus 15x. Got them. And now we have negative 9. So, our result, resulting polynomial is 2x to the fourth plus 11x cubed plus 11x squared minus 15x minus 9. So you see that we're just kind of doing the same things over and over and over. It's just the number of times that we have to do it that's a little bit different. Okay, so this one's a little bit different than we had before. This is something that's not even on our list of objectives. This is a... We're trying to multiply three binomials. But we're going to do it piece by piece. So let's take the first two binomials and multiply them together. Because we can do that, right? So with our first set of binomials... I guess I will stick with my green here. Our first set of binomials is right here. Here's our first one. So we've got x plus 1 times x plus 2. Excuse me, x minus 1. So we're going to distribute the x into all of this and then the 1 into all of this. So we can have x times x from our first distribution minus x times 1. Then our second distribution is going to be plus x and then 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Combine all our terms. We've got x squared negative x plus x. That's 0x, and then minus 1. So now we know that this x plus 1 times x minus 1, that is the same thing as x squared minus 1. So now we're going to multiply that by our 5x plus 2. And let's see, do it with, oh, why not pink? Why not? So we have our x squared minus 1 times 5x plus 2. Same process. Everything in here gets multiplied by everything in here. So we'll just try and stay organized. And we will say x squared times 5x plus x squared times 2, because that's right here, then we do minus 1 times 5x and minus 1 times 2. So now we're going to simplify our monomial times monomial. That first one comes to be 5x cubed. The second one is 2x squared. The next one is negative 5x. And the last one is negative 2. And that looks like it. Because everything is of a different degree. And they've all been simplified. So that is going to be our answer here.
So that wasn't too bad, especially since that first pair of binomials, when we multiplied them, they actually became a binomial, which is kind of unusual. So, um, and actually this is something special that we will talk about uh, probably in a few days. So, let's take a look at the next one. This one's actually um, a word problem and um, has to do with area. So we've got to be thinking about our areas and stuff. And a couple of things that we need to notice about the diagram, and I'll talk about them as we get there. So, let's do it with dark blue here. We want to write a polynomial that represents the total area of the garden and the walkway. So that means we want to find the area of the whole thing. Now, we don't know some of these measurements, so we're going to have to do some putting things together. For instance, let's see, we know that the area of a rectangle, the rectangle, area of a rectangle is length times width, base times height, whatever your preference is. So let's see, what is our base here? This doesn't really tell us anything for our base, but you know the top kind of does. The top kind of says that it's 25 here plus x plus x, because we don't know how wide that walkway is. So we have the area, so we have the base is going to be 25 plus x plus x, that's 2x. So let's write it in the right way here. Let's write it as 2x plus 25. Okay. Now we need to find the height. Well, our height is right here. We know that it's 10 plus x, or x plus 10. So we're going to multiply it x plus 10. So that's not quite a polynomial. That is a product. So we still need to multiply this product out. But we know how to do that. I'm just going to start drawing arrows instead of doing all this, writing out all those steps. So 2x times x. And then 2x times 10. Oops. 2x times 10. Then plus 25x plus 25 times 10. Okay. So now let's multiply these out. And when we get 2 times x times x, that's 2x squared plus 2x times 10, how about 20x, plus 25x, plus 250. Let's see, combining things, I've got two things that have x's in them, just plain old x's. So our combining that is 2 times 2x squared, plus 45x, plus 250. Now, you know, when I was working this out just now, I kind of realized that there's something special going on about that 250, because that 250 actually represents something. Letting you just kind of give you a minute to see if you can identify it. What's the area of the garden just by itself? That's 250. So the rest of this, that's the area of the walkway. This is the area of the garden. So that's pretty cool that we can recognize those numbers and see how they work together. Okay, you know there's going to be more to this than just writing this polynomial. 
now we're going to say, did I write that right? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> so now we say, well, if this walkway is um, three feet wide, then, we'll, then what is the total area? They're telling us now what x is. Now this is just a plug-and-play situation. Substitute 3 everywhere we see an x. 2 times 3 squared plus 45 times 3 plus 250. So let's see, 2 times 9 plus 45 times 3 plus 250. Just following the order of operations. 2 times 9 is 18. 45 times 3 is 135 plus 250. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the rest of this in my head. Uh, let's see. Let's start over here. 135 and 250 is 385. So plus 19, 385. 18 plus 385. It would be if that were a 20, that would be 405, but it's not, so it's 403. So the total area of the garden and the walkway, if the walkway is 3 feet wide, then our total area is 403 square feet. Again, I know I went through that fast. I didn't really explain all my thinking, but I think I explained most of it. And if you have questions, you know how to reach me. And I think this is the last example. Yeah, absolutely is. It, it is. And this was the last Ab Abraham Lincoln quote, I think. Um, it says, if I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first four hours sharpening my ax. And I said during our live session that to me, this means before you get started on a project, make sure you have all your tools and that all your tools are in working condition. So what that means to me in terms of a math class is that we're spending those four hours learning how to use our tools. That's going to make doing the actual math work in real life so much easier. So we really need to learn those tools, make sure they're working right, so that we can use them to chop down that tree. So I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you soon.